Good afternoon, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, US markets for the trading session Tuesday, the um, 6th of December 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. Uh, to, you can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store, and be sure to visit the site www.tradesignal.com. Okay, in terms of uh, US markets now, let's uh, look at the actual latest European data. FTSE is at 6.760, up 13 points, 0.2%. DAX up 40 points. The French CAC up 30 points, up 0.6%. The FTSE MIB certainly bouncing today still, up 1.5%. The IBEX up as well, and the stock 600 certainly higher too, at 0.5% positive. In terms of economic data, that's going to be going into the US session. Uh, we are coming back off uh, stronger, potentially stronger GDP from EU and stronger Germany factory orders. I think the real focus really will be in the trade balance state. Trade balance has actually come out negative. Unit labour costs have actually risen, so therefore inflation kicking in here. Okay, again, strengthening the Fed's argument for raising rates. Non-farm productivity actually did fall back to 3.1% expected or 3.3%. So not exactly fantastic. So trade balance certainly down. That's certainly negative from my perspective. Obviously, inflation creeping higher, again, is negative as well. And given the fact that obviously the productivity level certainly fell again negative, we have had uh, economic data out from uh, Canada. Canada actually came in stronger, exports came in stronger, and uh, imports actually came in weaker. So that doesn't bode well for European markets, given the fact that they are exporting abroad. So bear that in mind. Now we have US uh, Red Book Index, uh, factory orders, and economic optimism, along with the API data later on. Okay, to certainly watch out for in terms of potential direction. Now let's just see exactly where US markets finished yesterday, and let's see exactly where we're positioned. First of all, I want to start off with the Dow Jones. Now, the daily chart of the Dow Jones had a potential doji with stronger volume. That certainly does uh, does not bode well, okay, in terms of any future movement. Also, the Dow Transportation Index as well is into resistance, okay. So, again, doesn't bode well. So, for my own interpretation is that the Dow certainly is topping out, and therefore you are looking for a reversal in the Dow, and therefore looking for a reversal in U.S. equity. So, looking for a move lower, okay. In terms of the NASDAQ, let's bring up the NASDAQ. NASDAQ still is an inside bar. Until the NASDAQ takes out the key resistance at 4805, the NASDAQ will remain firmly bearish, from my understanding. Okay, certainly will be bearish. Now, you do have a, a, a gap here at 4813 as well. So, again, another zone to watch out for. 60 minute chart does have double top resistance at that 4795. Okay, and obviously, you have support at 4805. Previous support equals resistance. If you continue to move higher, then you're looking at 4840 and then looking at uh, 4852 as potential zones of resistance for the nasdaq be aware that you do have two potential unfilled gaps below you have the unfilled gap at 4700 and um, 4660 so those are two gaps that certainly need to close so again watch out for those gap fill uh, and uh, certainly watch out for gap fill below in terms of uh, the actual nasdaq let's just cross reference that with the biotechs and daily chart Still looks like it wants to close that gap below on the biotech. Let's look at semicons. Okay, semicons just an inside bar. Uh, semiconductor certainly looks like a H&S formation from my understanding. Okay, so again, watch out. Bearish engulfing or uh, candle certainly is in control. And uh, you're looking for a potential flush. So in terms of a flush, if I take the pivot high, take it to the pivot low. So anywhere around that region, really. Okay, you do have horizontal resistance here and here. So watch out for those two zones. Okay, so again, H&S formation. So potentially negative outcome. That's, all that we, oh, that's, the, that's what I can conclude here. Potentially negative outcome. Now let's move over to the uh, VIX. Quickly look at the VIX now. Let's see exactly where that's positioned. 10-minute uh, chart at the moment. Certainly looks like it's building a potential base here. You have an unfilled gap above. Okie dokie. Previous support equals resistance here. Sixty-minute chart, potential bottoming tail as well. We go volume. So again, certainly looking at a potential pivot low on the in the actual uh, volatility index, which in turn should feed through into the equity market as well. Okay, for the uh, the actual VIX. So looking for a potential pop in the VIX here, folks. The daily chart certainly is in no man's land, but these smaller time frames are showing you a potential support zone. Let's bring up the Russell now. Russell two thousand, IWM. Okay, so so again popping higher. 10 minute chart did actually face some turbulence if we do move higher then you do have turbulence above but this level certainly seems to be solid enough 
daily chart of the, of the uh, Russell at the moment, we could certainly get a, a sharp and a powerful reversal lower. So keep an eye on that. That certainly will be interesting to observe and watch and see what the next move is. But uh, certainly seems to be exhausted. Now let's look at the S&P 500, folks. There we go. Okay, S&P 500. Now this is a chart that's interesting to me. And one of the reasons why I'm actually bearish at the moment, looking for to gaps below to close. The daily chart at the moment certainly is showing signs of fatigue. No real test of the previous high. Okay. Go to the 60-minute chart. You put, you put, you actually registered a, a lower high at Fib 75%. So again, looking for weakness here, looking for bearish price action to ensue. And then the 10-minute chart certainly is a potential um, argument to short for again. Back into that 2208 zone, okay. Looking to short back down to that 2200 zone, potentially down to 2192. So again, the gap remains vulnerable and certainly needs to be closed. So again, two arguments there, folks. Two arguments to um, to actually uh, short the S&P 500 down to gap fill at 2192. And my bias certainly remains bearish based on that information, okay. Especially given the fact that the uh, Russell looks exhausted, Nasdaq looks exhausted now as well. So certainly looking for a potential sharp reversal, especially given the fact that you had Asian markets certainly under pressure, especially China. Uh, economic data from the Eurozone this morning really has been mixed. Uh, okay, mainly, sorry, mainly stronger, given the fact that they had factory orders. But having said that, the counter argument is that several Italian banks are limit down minus 5%. Uh, political uncertainty in the Eurozone obviously increases. Oil prices are certainly under pressure as well. If I bring up a chart of copper as well, you can see that we are into resistance on copper on the daily chart. So certainly looking like a potential top there on copper, which in turn signifies a potential top on the FTSE 100 too. So all those factors certainly coming into play uh, in terms of the next move in this marketplace. So can certainly keep an eye on that, folks. That will be interesting to observe. Okay, so uh, from my perspective, again, like I said, uh, we are looking at resistance on copper. Let's just quickly bring up oil price for you as well. You can see the h &S formation in play on oil. So both uh, commodities, risk FX, equities, all indicating resistance and looking for a move lower. Okay, folks, on that note, watch out for uh, gap fill at 2192 on the S&P 500. And it's all about gap fill. Goodbye now.